Hi all. Today we have a Pen 750 Spin Fisher uh, Pen 750 SS. This one has already been cleaned. Uh, and I put it together just so I can break it back down for you. Show sure where the parts come from and how to put it back together. First, I'll start with the handle. This particular one comes off. The sleeve where the collar does. Unscrew this to remove the the pivot. Usually these things are stuck or the screws are stuck in there. You can soak them in oil or use a little bit of heat to help loosen it. Uh, soaking in oil should help. Just let it sit for a while. You use a small screwdriver, flathead screwdriver to remove the retaining ring for the the drag. Make sure you hold on to the ring so it doesn't shoot anywhere. And I don't know if I replaced these drags yet or not. I didn't. They actually look pretty good. Don't think they need to be replaced. So next we'll go to the click tongue. Just hold on to the spring when you unscrew this. So again, it doesn't go shooting anywhere. And that's that for the spool. Now I'm gonna work on getting the shaft out. So I'll unscrew these bearing covers. And open up the side house, side housing. right off. Not on this side there's a set screw or a pivot screw that you have to remove before removing the main gear. The main gear comes up like that. Notice it's been cleaned already. Now I loosen the crosswind block assembly to remove the spool shaft. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth till you get it out. At this point you can remove the thrust washer, Teflon thrust, thrust washer there. Pull out the block. Obviously these things would have grease on them. You just clean those up. Remove the crosswind gear, pop out the bearing from the side cover. Then we'll re remove this nut to get the rotor off. Just pop straight up. It's a good idea to add some grease to this section right here so that the rotor does not get corroded or stuck to the ratchet. We'll work on the uh, the rotor and the bill, the bill assembly in a sec. Next I'll loosen up the screws for the eccentric levers and remove those. Now I'll go ahead and take off the the dog and the silent dog as well as the transfer lever so I can get the eccentrics out. The screw for these for the transfer lever is smaller threading or smaller size than the two dogs.
on this dog there's a spring which creates the click mechanism or click hair uh, sound that you hear when you engage it this is the silent dog here so this works as a dog which doesn't have any sound when it's active next I'll go ahead and pull the eccentric eccentrics out just push that one up to get it out Then we'll pull out these uh, these washers that come with that go with the eccentric. No, there are two different sizes on these. The smaller circumference um, one goes here. The larger one goes under the dog. Go to remove the bearing cover. Pop the bearing out, as well as the sleeve. Set those aside. And then we can push out the other bearing from the main housing. If you want to, you can also remove this <coughs> collar on the bottom that's protecting the uh, this main spool shaft that's always a difficult or usually a difficult thing to remove uh, you don't necessarily need to remove it if it's not broken or anything then just leave it the way it is however if you want to do uh, inspection and like <clears throat> clean inside here you certainly can try to remove it same process as the handle you can use some heat on it you can use some oil to help loosen it up. I just have to let it soak for a little while. Now I'm removing the trip bumper. And that's that for the main housing. So for the rotor, simply a process of removing some screws. And on this one, the dog was, I'm sorry, the, the spring, the bail spring was mangled. It still actually worked, but it was, it wasn't pretty. So I replaced that with a new one. And let's go ahead and remove the line roller assembly. And when I'm done with this, I'll show you how to put it back together. It's a good idea to pull out the um, the bushing that's inside the roller, just to check it. I already did. This one was fine. And sometimes what will happen is this lock washer will get corroded in there be stuck so if you are able to get it out or when you get it out use a flathead screwdriver to kind of clean the corrosion out of there then add some grease or oil to it when you reassemble it and that's that for breaking down a 750SS pen spin fisher and we're back so the first thing I'm gonna start with on the reassembly is the the spool and then Probably move on to the rotor and the bale assembly. So the first thing I'll do here is I'll put the the click assembly back in. So for ease of use, um, what I'm going to do is just attach the click tongue first, and just try to lay it on top of the. Uh, this spacer then just roll it over the hole use a small screwdriver or a pin or a pick to line it up then just drop the the screw inside 
And even when you do this, just, you'll still have to play with it a little bit because I have fat fingers. That doesn't always work. And my fingers aren't that fat, but it's just a tight space. So if that happens, <clears throat> what you can do is let's get the suit, the screw set in place, and gently move it over until you find the the hole, like that. And I don't tighten this down all the way yet because I'm going to stick some oil in there to help it uh, stay functioning properly. So then I drop a dab of relax oil so it just kind of works it way its way in there then I'll tighten it down and attach the spring take a smaller kind of a screwdriver hold on to the spring as you drag the end of the spring over the post and it should set in place. Now I'll work this back and forth a little bit to get the oil to kind of just work its way through the assembly. So next we'll go with the with the, the drag at the top of the spool. For this we start with the uh, Octagon or octagonal washer. Next is a Teflon washer. I'm going to add some Cal's dry grease to these. After the Teflon washer is the keyed washer. The thicker one goes, thicker washer goes on the bottom and the thinner washer goes at the top. Then the fiber washer, the next octagonal washer. One more fiber washer. Then the thinner keyed washer. Put the retaining spring back in place, simply angle it, find the groove, position that with one finger, use your fingernail to just pop it down, and it should all set in place, but you can use a little screwdriver to make sure, to push down it gently to make sure you're in the groove on all sides. Let me wipe that up. And that's the spool. Now we'll do the rotor and the bale assembly. So the first side I, start, side I start with is the bill spring side. And what I'll do is I'll start with the bill wire, assemble the, the line roller assembly. For this I add some grease all around it. This is actually more effective than putting oil on. Uh, especially in salt water because oil tends to just leak out. All with the bushing, then with the line roller, I do add some grease to this as well. To the outside of the bushing. Then I'll set that down and work on the bail arm. And for this, I stick a little bit of grease in there just to help it not get, not help the lock washer not get stuck in there. Set the lock washer in place. Stick the screw through. Pop on the line roller washer. And do a balancing act. Pulling both pieces and screwing it in. I don't, I don't lock it down yet because I still need to attach the the spring to the bail arm 
and the other side as well. So for the spring, I add a bit of grease to the end that goes inside the, the, the rotor. And then when we get everything set up, we're going to grease the spring as well. I like to add a little bit of grease here, just a little bit of grease. Because I don't know if you've ever um, had this happen to you, but sometimes the this screw will get stuck or corroded in there. And it's difficult to get out and you can risk sawing the screw off. And then you have a useless rotor unless you can drill the piece out of the the rotor the rotor okay I don't add a lot of I don't always add oil or grease to here um, this time I will because it does help for this to move around like that I did not remove the bushing that's inside this bale arm, but there is a bushing in there that you can remove to inspect. And the way I put this, the way I, the easier easiest way I put the uh, the bale arms in is I take that little notch that's supposed to be in this groove here, put it below it, and pinch. It's easier to pinch the uh, the bale arm over with the with the notch not set in place yet. Go down part of the way, hold onto the spring, lift the bale arm up and slide it over into the groove. And now it should be smooth sailing from here. So next I'll grease the bale spring. Then I'll flex this down to get all the way to the top and into the little edges that I did not get to at the bottom. Now we can put on the cover. And to put the cover on to make sure it's flush, what I do is I move the bale arm down onto the sets in place, then let it go and stick the screw in there. That's good. Next I take the this side of the bale arm and screw it into the rotor. I will add a little bit of grease to this side as well for the same reasons. If you don't do that then even though you can get some sand in if you're beach fishing with these, it helps ensure that this does not get corroded inside the, the hole. I'll go ahead and tighten all these things down. And then I'll tighten down the line roller. For the line roller, you don't always want to be tight. So it's a balancing act. You want it to be stiff but you also want the line roll to roll and if you can see that that grease inside there helps that just continue to roll let's go ahead and get the uh, one of the bearings in I'll add some grease to the inside of the the bearing holder or the bearing recess. Let me double check this bearing here. I've actually already added grease to these so they don't need it. So let's stick this one in here. Let's try the other one here and see if that works. It's amazing how these all these bearings are the same. This could be out of round. That's why it's making the noise. All that good stuff but they all fit into a specific hole. So for this one, it does go in, even though they're all the same size, but it does not go into this hole here. I'm going to cover this up temporarily, even though we have to put a set screw inside there, just so it doesn't fall out. 
that we're done with everything, we'll go ahead and remove it and put the set screw inside. All right, so next I'm gonna do the pinion gear. I'll grease it up lightly. And I don't put grease inside. I'll put some relax inside there so the spool shaft does not get sticky. Find our bearing. It's good. Stick that on top of the pinion gear. Set it inside the hole after I grease inside there. Then we can put on the bearing cover. We'll stick on the bearing cover here. And this one is a little tricky as well, but not impossible. I like to put one screw on one side, another screw on the other because it kind of lines everything up once you do that. So it's easier to get the third screw inside. And I'm gonna ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down because I won't be able to access them much longer. So rather than forgetting, I'll do it now. We'll go ahead and do the eccentrics. And same process as for the spring in the in the bale. I'll add a dab of grease to the end of this spring for the eccentric. I don't put the sleeves in yet. I'll do that afterwards. Then I just kind of play with it, find the groove, press my finger down on top of the spring, and gently turn the eccentric so it sets in place. Next I'll put the smaller sleeve on and then the knob with the screw. The reason you put the eccentrics in first is because you, the dog sits on top of them. So they have to go on first. And I kind of hand tighten it with just the micro tool because it does not need to be super tight. Add a bit of grease to the spring, to the hole it goes. And for this side, for the, the dog, what I've actually found is that putting the sleeve in first is easier and I'm sure it's because of the thickness than after. Either, sorry, easier before you put in the eccentric than after. Same process for finding the notch. Find it, kind of lock it in place. Put the knob on. And then screw it in place. All right, so we'll go ahead and grease these down. So for the for the for the dogs, what I like to do is I like to start with this dog on this side that comes with the spring before attaching the ratchet and the silent dog. So I'll set this in place, the spring in place, and this is the position it needs to be in to work properly but when I start to when I go to install it I open it up so it's free and it would not work and then I put the dog on top of it get the screw in place get the screw in there and I'll find a groove so I can get the screw below the collar 
and then I'll take this side of the spring, push it around the block here so it engages and tighten it down. And now it works properly. I will add a little bit of grease to this ratchet, not too much, but it's just to aid in the dog gliding over it. And I will also add a little bit of grease to the inside of these leaves for the same purpose. Go ahead and set up the dog. Feels nice. Get this in place. Well, before I do that, let me add the sleeve, even though it can probably be done afterwards. It just helps keep this uh, level. Now I just open the dog on this side up so it locks into place. Open this bale arm, sorry, this eccentric knob up so it's not locked in. So I can get the hole f more free than if it were closed. Same process as the other one, essentially. Find the groove for the collar. And having this one in place helps aid in that process. Then locking it down. For the eccentric, I just rested on top of the eccentric. I'm sorry, for the transfer lever, I rested on top of the eccentric for the silent dog. And then screw into place as well. And for this, for the tran for the transfer lever, I do add a little bit of oil there, so it can kind of work its way around. Then I'll lock all these down. And that's pretty much that for the upper portion. Go ahead and get the trip bumper on not too tight because you'll crack you can crack the trip bumper if you tighten it too much reattach this uh, I do put some grease in there as well just so it doesn't get stuck now we can go on to the crosswind gear and the crosswind block get those set and then we'll do the main gear and be almost done for the crosswind gear I actually grease in here where it sits as well as the bottom I'll wipe some of that off it looks like to be a little bit too much and then I'll grease the teeth and then the top portion of it as well. I do grease around this little knob here or this post because the crosswind block is going to sit on top of that. And I want to make sure that it's not getting stuck. So I wipe some of the grease off there. Go ahead and set that down in, in place. Then we'll take the crosswind block and add a little bit of grease on this the inside and just kind of brush it around all around this is one of the parts that tend to get corroded or eaten away by the salt water set that in place it just sits right down there then we'll go ahead and get the the main gear greased as well and set it in place obviously because of the different sizes in the gears grease will just transfer from one piece to another so even though you may see some 
gaps or where you see uh, or gaps or spacings in there there won't be there when the the reel is being used the grease will kind of just work its way through all the different parts of the gears or the teeth I do grease in here as well just because it's amazing like the tendencies that we get some people don't do it some people do I'm not sure there's any kind of benefit to greasing there but I do it set the main gear in place notice I can go back and forth I want to make sure I can do that because when I try to set the rotor on top I don't want this engaged because then what will happen is it will uh, well, let me open this up show you sorry I don't I don't want this engaged because what will happen is it will it will lock and if I go too high this cross wind block will actually get locked in there so now I take the <clears throat> the rotor and get that on top you kind of want to set this in place then as I said earlier grease around this receptor the male portion of the rotor so that it doesn't get stuck to the inside of the under the the rotor or on top of the the main housing so I don't want this so I'm going to open this up so it spins freely for when I'm putting in the spool shaft like I said I add some oil to this instead of adding grease and just rub it around and I'll add grease to where the crosswind block will engage with the spool shaft go ahead and get this set in place let's go ahead and lock this down first Now we can go ahead and stick the main shaft in. I use a screwdriver to kind of lift the crosswind block up and kind of wiggle it in there. You'll see the uh, indentation in the crosswind, I'm sorry, in the spool shaft. Once it sets in place, you can just pop the, the block on top or the, the cover on top and it'll go straight in. Then just go ahead and tighten that down. And I do one extra turn with this, with the, the ratchet screwdriver, just because. I'll add a little bit of grease to these holes so that water doesn't get set in there and starts to eat away at the metal and lock the screws in there. Can stick on the thrust washer now just kind of play with it then I'll get the housing stick it on top like that uh, what I will do before I do that is go ahead and remove this add the set screw I do add some grease there as well same thing happens with salt water intrusion screw that in place just making sure that the teeth are engaged not on sitting on top of each other but sitting inside of each other before I lock this down all right that's locked down cover that up get this on top I'm gonna to add a little bit of grease here inside here stick that down there add this bad bearing to it which we will replace just for the purpose of the video and before I close that up actually what I'm going to do here is, as well as grease lightly the top of this main gear set that down screws in place Now we can 
put on the cover, the brand cover on this side. And we're almost done. All we have left to do is the handle and for this, I do add some grease to certain places. One inside here. Some here for where the screw goes. Again, like I said before, this has a tendency to get stuck in there. Or the screw does. So if we grease that, the grease transfers over to this hole and it makes it easier for this to be removed. Depending on the amount of pressure that you put on these handles, sometimes you'll you'll get a you'll open up or disassemble one of these handles and you'll see that the the uh, the screw is actually bent. Sometimes they they work and you can put them back in, uh, especially if you can't replace it. But if they're bent, you should replace them because it just makes it a nightmare sometimes to get it out. And that's that. And that's how you put together Penn Spinfisher 750SS. Alright, thanks for watching guys.